All right, Tim. Tim Wenzel. Tim Wenzel. Rob McKenna. That's my name. It's my gift. Wear it out. Anyway, don't wear. Well, that's good. I've heard that for a while. <laughs> um, okay, I'm putting on my rally cap for this one. So home stretch over the halfway go, point. That's a little that's, that's silly. My sons would be like, please stop that, whatever it happened. I'm probably gonna say stop this, whatever's happening right now. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna start here. All right, we are in the tenets of leading with kindness. And yeah, it's been awesome to to work through these. And it's given me it's it's amazing to see the connective tissue that we've always experienced just as human beings, but between the kindness games and, and wild leaders and our philosophical foundations and hoping to invite as many people as possible into this. And so, Tim, I wanted to dig into tenets five and six for just a moment. And if we could do that. So five and six are mindfulness and purpose. Um, and the drive, let's start with, with mindfulness. Uh, the driving question here is what if we approached each day with mindfulness? Mm. Let's go. Tell us what you, tell us what you were thinking and I'll uh, see where my brain goes with this. Right. Well, we say a day, but I actually zoom out to a week. Uh, so every Sunday uh, in the evening, uh, right after dinner, I open up my calendar for the following week, sometimes two weeks, just to see what's coming up. And I look through the days of the next week to see what's going on. And I found that there are two situations in which I tend to not show up very well. Mm. The things that I'm super excited about doing and the things that I dread. Everything else in the middle is like easy, right? You just show up, you're like, hey, what's going on? And people are like, yeah, let's do it. And the outcomes are basically like everybody knows where it's going. You work through, but these two extremes are tough. And I'm going to talk about the dread first and we can all identify with it. The difficult conversations, the, the meetings about performance, uh, the things that we don't want to do, right? Uh, either we don't like doing them. They make us uncomfortable and we avoid these things. We avoid planning for these things, hoping that they will go well, which is why yeah. most of the time they don't go as well as we hoped. Yeah. So I look at that and I say, okay, what is, um, what can I do to produce the best outcome for me and for the other people in this situation? And then on the other extreme are the things I'm super excited for. And that's a weird thing. Cause like Tim, you're excited for, it. aren't you good at it? Maybe, but I have a big personality and when I show up super amped, sometimes I can suck all the life out of a room. I can push everybody to the walls and it becomes about like Tim and the experience that Tim is excited to have. And I found that sometimes other people don't find their place in that experience. I leave them mm. alienated mm. because it mm. becomes all about me. And so the same question. How can I make this situation or this outcome the best for me and for everyone there? Uh, and I take into account the actual people that are going to be there with me. Um, and this bleeds into purpose too, because you have to wonder like, what is my purpose and what is their purpose in this space and how can I help facilitate it well? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. Or maybe we open up purpose now and just kind of tackle these together because it's very interesting. It's, because with purpose, the driving question for number six was, and then I'd like to make a comment about mindfulness, is what if, the, on number six, purpose, what if we intentionally identified the purpose in each of our interactions? And it was interesting when you were describing mindfulness, because um, this it's, this is where, you know, this sounds kind of academic, but um, I do like the concept. It's not just a concept. It's a thing of metacognition. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, quite simply defined as thinking about your thinking and some people think that thinking is a waste of time and by the way the research on behavior and thinking is we don't know which way it goes so in other words um some people think that that if i do something different and you see organizations that do something different so if for example if i'm kind it will change the way i think and right. other people think i need to lead with i if i if i think about being kind it'll change the way i behave well the reality is the research we don't know which way it goes that both, both have an impact. So changing the way we think actually does happen. So mindfulness, like putting our mind to something with intention 
is a powerful, powerful thing. And, and so thinking about our thinking, is, it's like you were describing, it's taking a moment to pause. Yep. And just like people think like, for example, they go, where are you most mindful? They're like, well, when I go to the mountains, well, I don't think there's anything magical about the mountains. I think they just cause us to stop. Yes. You know, so it's like, so the, to stop and realize, and this relates to our other ones that we talked about self-control. It's like, that you have a choice to make. I'm, I, that's, I sound so like condemning. I don't mean it that way. It's like, we have a choice to make and sometimes I don't see it. And right. so being mindful is, is so critical. And then talk to me about purpose. Um, so it says, what if we intentionally identify the purpose in each of our interactions? You know, this is a big one for me. That, yep. I mean, it has, yeah. And it's beyond some popularized notion of it. Like, what are you talking about here? So it goes hand in hand with mindfulness because like, okay, people take for granted that, well, I do a thing because I want it to go a certain way. Yeah. Yes, but that can be very superficial thinking or actually just an assumption and not a complete thought. What does that mean for me? Like, how do I want this to go? That happy outcome, that emotional outcome, uh, the project outcome, the logical analytical outcome, like whatever it is, why? Why do I want that? Why do I need that? And what happens next? And what happens next? And how does this build into something meaningful, more meaningful than that simple interaction, right? Which is why mindfulness and purpose go together. But then you also have to think about what is the purpose of the other people involved? Because yeah. it shouldn't just be about Tim. It should be about, I know I need this. But everybody yeah. also has a purpose for being here. And I bet if I gave it a little thought, I could probably guess in the 85 percent percentile, right? And yeah. I could architect, how do we all get our purpose out of this? And what is my part in it? And, yeah. and if you go, so it's, it's a scientific method. I have a problem. I have a hypothesis about how to solve the problem. And this hypothesis should lead to this result. And if we don't ever take that line of thinking when we actually experiment and we get different results we're confused as to why uh, we have no metrics we have no pathway to show why the deviation happened uh, so this yeah. is literally applying the scientific method to the week and to the day ahead of you it's good it reminds me also of um, you know this is a big deal for me because our research around purpose and it's not just why are you here right but it's more specific some of the things you're de you're describing where it's why are you in this specific moment, not just for yourself, but for those who are who's are in your sphere of influence or are a part of that situation or that interaction? And it reminds me, Tim, uh, you know this, but a couple of weeks ago, I I speak at my son's university oh, and cool. he was introducing me. And I know this to be true, but I don't want to be all teacher dad. But I but he was going to introduce me and he was quite nervous because it's going to be 1500 of his peers. Wow. When he is introducing his dad, it's the first time he's been in front of spoken in front of an audience that large. And I was telling him the night before, I said, what's most important is to think about. So why are you doing this? What What is the purpose of every state, every word that comes out of your mouth? And, uh, and I, I told him, I said, I can tell you what it is for me is I know that your introduction of me is just as important as anything I say. Yep. So I told him, I said, we're doing this together. Like, whether you like it or not, this is not you introduced. Like, we are actually in this together to try to invite people into a different way of thinking. It was calling and purpose was actually the topic. And so it was because I know that, that purpose is such an important piece. The research supports it. Like, if actually are in specific, why are you in this situation with these folks? And like, to your point, who have their own purpose for being here. Absolutely. So, so good. You know, and that's part of the engagement as well, right? And um. I love how you frame it. What is my purpose in this moment? This can be one of those curiosity leads to self-control combined with mindfulness to say, okay, I'm in a bad situation. Like I did yeah. not want to be here, but why am I here? And what effect can I have that's larger than this situation? Right. And it's the type of thinking, this type of thought process that separates people that do great things are considered like, oh, it's amazing versus people that just get through tough times. And I'm not saying the focus should be to become great. But when you show up in a great way, you serve and uplift the people around you. You help them achieve a purpose as well. And that is leading with kindness in my book. 
good. Brother, that's good stuff. That is so good. Well, I hope something we're talking about here has inspired something in you. And there's, I know what it, it is for folks who are getting a chance to tune in. So, and we'll keep leading through this as a community. Uh, we're going to go through seven and eight, nine and 10 next. So next episode. See you, Rob.